These are the haunting words of a traditional Teze hymn. A Teze hymn, for those who don't know it, came out of France and it's used at a, as a meditative word, song. It's a form of prayer with short phrases, often simple words, but a strong message. It has the power to center a person on God or give words to a prayer often too hard to speak for yourself. This one that I sang is one that's often sung during Holy Week, especially during the time between Good Friday and this morning, as it gives voice to that fear and sense of doubt that those following Jesus would have felt long ago, as they wondered and waited for something to happen be it arrest or abandonment or breaking up in the wake of the cross. Every time I hear this song, I wonder if this was a song that lingered in Mary Magdalene's heart as she made her way to the garden tomb that first Easter Sunday long ago. Her steps feeling heavy and hard as she tried to figure out what would happen next. As she questioned God with each step, going, why did you allow this to happen? Why did a good man have to die? Why do I have to be left alone with this sorrow? I believe she was asking God, where were you when my world was turned upside down? Or at least I know I find myself offering up similar prayers when the world feels far too dark. When I hear about another shooting in a place of worship, when I watch on the evening news scenes of devastations, of people being flooded out, of refugees being turned away, of the hungry being forgotten, I often find myself crying out to God saying, where are you? Where are my answers when I'm looking for hope? Let me see something to know that you are still present, that even in our darkest moments we can have hope. We can still dream about making our world a better place because we can still make a difference. And I don't think I'm the only one to ever shout out to the Lord, what is your plan? Where are you when I'm praying? For all of us live in a world that is not yet how it should be. And so all of us gathered at one time or another have walked in Mary's shoes, worried about what's going to happen next and wondering if there is life after heartbreak. Wondering if God will still answer our prayers when everything around us turns to dust. For those of you who have ever walked in Mary's shoes, hear the good news. The great and wonderful news of our Easter season. Because of Easter, we have God's answer to our prayer. Because the tomb is empty, we have hope. The good news of our Easter season is not only do we have a God who answers prayer or who listens to prayer, we have a God who answers it. For our great creator was able to turn one of the most brutal images of despair into an image of hope, to an image of promise. The cross was forever transformed into a more powerful image of hope and forgiveness, of peace, of resurrection and renewal because of our God. The empty tomb is God's answer to all of his people's prayer, 
a constant reminder that God is with us, that God is good, and God is making new and wonderful things happen all around us. As he is hard at work bringing about a world with no more sickness, no more sadness, no more sorrow, and no more death as proclaimed from the prophet Isaiah. For these things will be forever defeated by the Lord of everlasting life. This is the good news that Mary first received so long ago, as her tears were dried by the hands of her good teacher, and the sorrow of the last few days were washed away with the joy of the rising sun. This moment forever marked our world. For in the garden so long ago, hope was born anew. Death was defeated, and God's everlasting love reigned triumphant. For all the world to see. For in our Easter garden, Mary found the answer to her prayers and the answer to all of ours. And her life was transformed. No longer did doubt weigh, le- weigh heavy on her heart and worry caused her feet to stumble. For now joy, hope, peace, and love had taken their place, so much so that she must have wondered if she had somehow grown wings, with the speed that she found herself racing back to the others to share the good news. And this is the good news that we've gathered to celebrate this morning, with our triumphant shouts of glory to God in the highest, as we proclaim the wonder of the empty tomb and the promised new life that God gave to us so long ago. But this is not the only reason we've gathered here this morning, for Easter is not a single day of the year, but rather a season of the Spirit. And long after the children and the not-so-young-at-heart have slept off their sugar high, God's Easter spirit will still linger in our hearts. For the Easter story is still happening today. Even though Mary saw the risen Lord so long ago, our Easter story is still happening all around us. For whenever God's people cry out to the Lord for salvation, our God answers out of love. Our great creator is still calling out and welcoming people today to meet him in his Easter garden, to meet him in a place of life abundant so that our souls can be healed, so that our hearts can be restored, and so we too can go out with joy in our hearts as Mary did before us, sharing the good news of the risen Lord and proclaiming to the world that Christ is risen, And Christ is with us now and forevermore. Hear the invitation. Our Lord is calling out to us this morning to see firsthand the promise of the empty tomb. To show us once more the wonderful and powerful way that he's chosen to save our world. For the good news of the empty tomb, the good news of the risen Christ, is God's answer to all of our prayers. For because Jesus lives, this means that good has triumphed over evil, and death has been forever defeated by the Lord of everlasting life. This means that no matter what we may face in this world of ours, we will not be overwhelmed, for God is with us now and forevermore. This means that one day all those who are sick will be healed. All those who live in fear will be saved. The exile will be welcomed back home with joy. The hungry will be fed and the lost shall be found. Because Jesus lives, our world will never be the same again. This is our good news of our Easter story, that God not only hears our prayers, but answers them in a way that changes our world forever. And this good news is not only for today, but all of our tomorrows, 
as time and time again the Holy Spirit will invite us to walk through the Garden of Resurrection, to hear again the good news that God is in control and God is with us now and forevermore. For this is what he has promised to those who he loves and calls to be his own. And so I invite you this morning to claim this good news as your own, to go out into the world as Mary did long ago, with songs of praise on your lips and bearing witness to the promise of the resurrection. For Christ has risen, and he rose for you and I and people we know and people we may never know. And because he lives, our world will never be the same. And we are called to share this good news, to invite others to come to the garden of the empty tomb and see for themselves that death has been forever defeated by the Lord of everlasting life. Because God loves us so much, he gave us his only son. So come to the garden of the risen Lord. Come and be healed. Come and know that you are loved. And come knowing you are always welcome as we walk the path from this world to the one that is still yet to come. For our Easter story is the wonderful way that God chose to answer all of our prayers. Thanks be to God. Amen.